I get it. You just got done with a 12 hour shift and put your kid to bed. Now you want to hop on a raid of Tarkov, but you only have time for one. You go into a game, run in the raid, and you get fucking head eyes immediately, just like we've all been. Now you just want to chuck your fucking computer into your pool of angry tears. And I totally get that because I used to be there. Now, or maybe your situation is you just have a life and you just want to play some Tarkov on a time crunch. Nothing wrong with that. Now, obviously, you just don't have time to watch these multi hour long guides on YouTube. So that is why I have here compiled over 100 hours of knowledge into a 10 minute video. The first three quarters of this video is going to be for those of you who only wear Huggies. OK, you just started wearing these goddamn diapers. You shit in them a lot and you have not upgraded to Pampers. The last quarter of this video is going to be for those of you who have upgraded to Pampers and have started crawling around like little fucking gremlins on the ground. You understand me? So last quarter, that's for you. First three quarters, it's all going to be great. Stay around. Now, obviously, we have absolutely no time for an intro, so all you need to know is that I am Magneti and you are now a Huggies wearing wannabe Chad. OK, let's go. All right, let's start off with eating our vegetables. OK, let's make this snappy. You want to get your Huggies wearing ass into the action. I'm quite certain. All right. Firstly, we're obviously going to boot up the game here and then you're going to choose your faction, USEC or Bear. Now, if this isn't your first time booting up the game, you've already done that and that's fine. If you haven't done that, just know that Bear can be better for PVP and USEC can be better later on for PVE. That's all you need to know. The next stop is going to be the traders. So from the main menu, you're going to go all the way down here at the bottom and click traders. Then you're going to go in here and you're going to get all your tasks. Obviously, mine are going to look different. Click on the task and click accept. That is how you claim a task. Now we're going to do this so that you have something to strive for in your raids whenever you decide to upgrade to playing on your PMC. Now let's go ahead and scoot past the stash real fast, because who cares? You're going to be playing as your scav anyways. Next, we're going to chat about the health system super quick. This is very complicated and I'm dumbing this down immensely for you to understand this. Now, each segment of your diaper wearing motherfucking ass has a certain amount of health. All right. You got 35 health in your head, 85 in your thorax, 70 in your stomach, 60 in each arm and 65 in each leg. Every single piece of your body can be absolutely fucking obliterated. OK, you need to understand that. And when your overall reaches zero, you die right here. When your head reaches zero, you also die. If your thorax reaches zero and you take one extra piece of damage to your thorax, you will also probably fucking die. Now, what's absolutely crucial is that you need to know that every health item does different things, and there are a ton of different health effects in this game. Now, when a body part reaches zero, aka getting blacked out, it's as if that part of the body is completely dead, and as such, it'll have different effects on you. Blacked out parts can only be brought back with a CMS or a Serve 12, except your head, obviously, because then you're dead. Don't forget that. Now, moving on, if you right click on anything and click inspect, you will be able to see that this Salewa here stops light bleeds and stops heavy bleeds. What the fuck does that mean? Who the fuck knows? You have no idea right now. You also need to keep an eye on this right here. This consumes 45 HP and 175 HP from the Salewa, respectively. So if this is full at 400 and you use it to stop a heavy bleed and a light bleed, you will now only have... 180 health. As you can see, that took me a while to figure that out. Now, you can do this with literally any item. You can inspect it and you'll have to do this in the beginning, which actually I'm going to give you an extra tip right now. You're going to come back to the traders and fucking middle mouse click every single item in here because it's going to probably be grayed out if this is your first time playing. Now, moving on on screen, I'm going to display what every different effect on your body looks like, and I'm going to display right next to it the items that you can use to treat that effect. Now, the main ones you'll be dealing with are going to be light bleed, heavy bleed, fresh wound, fracture, stun, pain, tremor, overweight, dehydrated and fatigued. Now, respectively speaking, everything you can use to heal those problems, light bleeds, bandage, heavy bleed, tourniquet or ezer marshes. Fresh wounds, those just heal over time. Fractures, you're going to use a splint. Stuns, those also heal over time. Pain, you're going to use painkillers, obviously. You just inject yourself with fucking morphine. Tremors, those are specialized meds. Other different types of injectors can help get rid of those, as well as painkillers or treating other wounds that are affecting or creating the tremor. Overweight, fucking take your shit-filled huggies off, motherfucker. Dehydrated or fatigue, well, then you should have brought fucking food and water with you. All right, make sure to do that next time, goober. Or find some in raid immediately. Now, the less common ones you're probably not going to see early on in your career, maybe once you've upgraded to cloth diapers, is going to be tunnel vision, contusions, flash and poison. I'm not even going to go over what can heal these because it's just not important. 
All right, that was a lot of information, but the health system is absolutely crucial to go over before you even get into your first raid so that you know what the fuck you are doing and how to survive. Now, next, I would normally teach someone the keybinds and controls to help them optimize them, which would be down here in the settings. and controls. You can obviously see there are a shitload of controls, so maybe just brisk over this and familiarize yourself with it. Now, this guide is absolutely compact as fuck, so I'm not even going to go over these, okay? You should probably just look up another guide or check my channel to see if I have one. So, now, where are you going to take your ugly huggies wearing ass now? You, you probably got no idea. Well, you have your tasks, uh, but let's not steer you in the wrong direction, okay? We don't want you to lose all that precious gear, you understand me? Now before you even choose a map to play on your scav, get your phone or get on a second monitor and open up mapgenie.io forward slash Tarkov, okay? If you don't want to pay to access the Ground Zero map, then go to escapefromtarkov.fandom.com forward slash wiki forward slash ground underscore zero. If you don't do this, you're going to hate your life more than you already are doomed to do so. So just fucking do it, okay? Just do it. Now. Select your scav and play on whatever fucking map you want. I'm going to teach you on ground zero. All right, come on, Huggies, let's go. We're going to get into the action now, all right? You're going to go in here, you're going to click scav, you're going to click next, and you're going to go to ground zero. Now, once you're in, don't just fucking go running around willy-nilly because you can walk all the way over here, right? You spawn over here with your scav, and then you walk over here, and boom, you get blown up by a fucking mine, okay? You don't want to do that. You don't want to get shot off spawn. You don't want to do stupid shit, okay? Don't think stupid. Think smart. You also don't want to go running around shooting everybody as a scav because you are playing as a temporary faction known as the scavs or scavengers. So basically, you're going to want to play in reactionary mode as a scav. I'm not playing as a scav because I want to play as my PMC so I can better show you guys what the fuck's going to go on. Now, to keep it simple, just trust me, okay? You'll learn as you go and you'll figure out more things as you go. The next thing that we're going to eat is going to be the meat and potatoes. So let's talk about map, movement, combat, audio and looting guides. All right, ground zero, here we are. You made it, you fucking baby. So with your mapgenie.io forward slash Tarkov open because you paid the $10 lifetime transaction fee, it's only $10, just fucking buy it. I highly recommend it. You're gonna take a peek at the potential spawn locations and try to figure out where you are, but I'm gonna make it super easy for you. We're gonna start from north to south, okay? So this is north, okay? You could tell that it's north because you have the quad skyscraper view. If you want to count this one, you've got the Pentel skyscraper view. This is the main skyscraper that you know is north. That building with the fucking antenna thing will be south. Now let's go over the potential spawn locations for ground zero. Again, starting from north, moving to south, we have the scav checkpoint spawn, okay? So you're going to spawn right back there in that corner. You'll know because you'll have this barricade, you'll have the Terra Group garage entrance, and if you come around this corner here, you'll have the Emercom checkpoint just down that way, and you'll have, obviously, Skyside right there. You will spawn right here. So this is the scav checkpoint. I personally have never seen this spawn, but another spawn on the north side is that you could spawn outside, just in this general area, still very close. Now the next spawn point is going to be Emercom checkpoint. The Emercom checkpoint spawn is going to be basically right on the Emercom checkpoint exfil, which is right over there in that corner. There's going to be a gurney with a dead body on it and a dead body on the floor. Dead body, gurney with a dead body. Now another spawn point on the northern side, you're going to come in the garage here. Well, you're not going to go anywhere because you're going to spawn here. It's going to be right under this B letter here. You'll spawn right here looking out this way, and this is how you'll know you're in the Terra Group garage. So generally speaking, this is Skyside Spawn 1. There's a little cafe here, there's a main lobby for the hotel, as well as a generally small outside area. I have spawned outside of here on a multitude of occasions. I've also seen people spawn on the inside, so those are the options for Skyside 1. Now Skyside 2 is a little bit more complex and possibly even misleading according to the Tarkov wiki map. It seems like you could spawn anywhere in this lobby here, which would be Skyside 2. Now, I have never personally spawned here, nor have I ever seen anybody spawn here before, but again, it is a potentiality. Now the next spawn, moving from north to south, is going to be the Terra Group outside spawn. I have spawned here before, you'll spawn generally in this spot. This is going to be just outside the Terra Group building. As you can see, the Terra Group garage is in there with the one spawn and the spawn back by Scav Checkpoint, the road spawn we just went over, and that is Skyside with two spawns in it as well. Now keep in mind, the Skyside 1 spawn is on the other side of Skyside, so you can either go through the building and come out this end, or you can go around, come back by the Emercom Checkpoint, or you can come 
up double ramp or triple ramp, I guess, technically. Now, as we move more centrally, the next spawn point towards the center of the map is going to be the hobo ramp spawn, as I like to call it. The hobo spawn will be just beneath us here. Now this is the hobo spawn. I have spawned here many a time. If you spawn here, you're a fucking hobo, all right? Now actually, if you spawn at the hobo spawn, I highly recommend that you come out anywhere on this side and come just down these steps. You've got a duffel bag to loot here. You breach this door and this room is full of loot. There's a dead body up there. This room is super secret, full of loot. So we're going to jump around a little bit. I'm going to show you fusion spawn one, which is in the back, which is where we spawned when we started this raid, which is going to be right in that corner. Do not go anywhere in that direction. Just run upstairs, run this way. There's mines there and there's nothing over there. Don't go that way either, because you'll get shot by out of bounds sniper scav unless you have a flare. So now as we make our way a little bit more south, there's going to be a lot more spawns towards central of the map. So next up, we're going to do tar bank one, two and three spawns. A really common scab spawn is actually tar bank three is what I would call it. You'll spawn back in that corner by the safe and then you can come up this way to get out of tar bank. Now, whatever you do in tar bank, do not come down this hallway by the broken elevator. If you go all the way down this hallway and into the room at the end, you will get blown up by a mine. Now, there are two other potential spawns in this map. I have not spawned there, nor have I ever seen somebody spawn there, so I'm not entirely sure where the exact locations are. But this is what the general building looks like on the first floor, and there are highly unlikely any spawns upstairs. As you can see, there is razor wire here on the steps. I've never, ever seen somebody spawn upstairs. Now, actually, before I move on, just because there's razor wire here doesn't mean there's nothing upstairs. The tar bank is actually a fantastic place to go when we talk about looting filing cabinets and specific items you might need later on in the video. I highly recommend coming here as there are about four to six filing cabinets, which all have four drawers each that you can loot tons of stuff out of. Now, as we move across the street to Fusion, there's going to be three spawns in Fusion. So if you spawn anywhere down here in the dining area, you will know that you are in Fusion. There's also upstairs, so make sure you're not upstairs, or if you are upstairs, I mean, that's fine. Just make sure you know where you spawned. If you're upstairs, know that you need to go downstairs to get out. Now, something you do need to bear in mind is that there are underground spawns. There is a long underground tunnel that essentially goes from one end of the map to the other, south to north, north to south. You can spawn almost anywhere down here. There's about four spawn points down here, typically one on each end, and then I believe there's two somewhere along the middle. Just pay attention to where you are and where you spawn. You should be able to read, obviously, not this Russian sign, but there are signs that say, for example, Empire. That is going to be the same as Tar Bank. You can also keep in mind that if you see the Empire signs, you can know that Fusion is in the corner there. There's also some good loot in there. If you keep running down this underground roadway area, parking garage thing, you will continue to see signs as to where different buildings are. Good loot here in those crates. For example, Terror Group Building. Something else to keep in mind is that those double doors right there, if you run past those, you, there is nowhere else to go underground here. There is some loot in there, but down here, there is nothing else. There is also another spawn point down here on this end. Yet again, according to the Tarkov wiki map, there is a outside Capital Insight spawn somewhere in this corner, this general area. So this will be between Fusion or Oasis and Capital Insight. There's also approximately two spawns in the Capital Insight building. I personally have actually spawned pretty much at the end of this hallway here down this corner, facing this way, right about here. I believe I've also spawned in this corner. So this is the Capital Insight building spawns. Now, I do have this map for the most part memorized. I just don't have the locations memorized. So you've been seeing me glance at the map. So now hopefully you were paying attention to what the buildings looked like during these clips because that will help you immensely with map knowledge. Next, we're going to check your exits by pressing O. This I recommend to be the very first thing you do when you get into a match. You need to double click O. I can press O because I changed my keybinds. You can see that I have police court on vehicle extract, Emercom checkpoint, scav checkpoint, co-op and Mira Av. You will almost always spawn with either Emercom Checkpoint or Nakatani Basement Stairs. Sometimes you can spawn with both. Don't ever worry about using either Extract except for maybe the Police Cord on Vehicle Extract, but you will need 5,000 rubles to do that, and you can only use that as a PMC. 
So the only two extracts I'm going to cover in this video are going to be the Emercom checkpoint and the Nakatani basement stairs, because this video is getting longer than it should be already. So since we're by the Nakatani basement stairs, basically already, I'm going to show you how to get to the Nakatani basement stairs. You're going to run over this way to the Nakatani building. There's going to be an open door here. There's razor wire there. You can go that way if you want to. I think you just got to shoot out the window, maybe. Oh, nope, already open. So if you want to go through the razor wire, help yourself. You're going to come down this hallway all the way and you're going to go down these steps all the way. It'll end up popping up about halfway down. Once you're all the way down or halfway down, really doesn't matter. I say go all the way down just for the most amount of safety. You'll be extracted within about six seconds. Whatever you do, if you spawn over here by the Nakatani building, don't go over that way. If you see a sign that has crosshairs like that, that means you're going to get sniped if you go that direction. So once you've reached the most northern part of the map, you'll see this downstairs ramp here, which you can actually go down there and you can go around and you can end up getting out outside that area where I said that you can no longer access anything. If you go that direction past those double doors I was talking about, you can actually come up this ramp. As you can see, we have the Terror Group building garage and the Scav checkpoint spawn point. The Emercom checkpoint is going to be by the Unity Credit Bank building. You're going to come over here. And like I said earlier that there's a spawn over here. This is also an extract, which I'm not going to stand in because it will extract me. You just stand in this general area and it will extract you. One thing I will say is to make sure you watch out for campers in this van by opening this door. Sometimes extract campers will be up in here, peeking this extract, making sure that, uh, you know, you don't get out alive and they'll steal your stuff. Easy way, open the back door and you can just fucking end their life. Ground Zero is so great because it is absolutely tiny, but it has almost every aspect of Escape from Tarkov in the game. All right, now that covers absolutely everything in regards to the map guide for you diaper wearers. So pull up them shit filled huggies and let's get into looting. All right, looting. So. Immediately upon spawning in as a scav, you're going to want to open your inventory and check what you got right away. OK, do not delay this. All right. You're just check your stuff. See what you have spawned in with you. OK, keep it simple. Like, do you have armor? If so, what kind of armor is it? How much of my body does it cover? You can do all of this just simply by if you have armor, double click it. And then you can see these drop downs here. This is what areas your armor is covering you at. And then this is the tier of your armor and what points it is at. Something as well is like, do you have a helmet? What kind of gun do you have? Do I have money on me? Do I have magazines? How much ammo do I have? That type of stuff, food, water, so that you can be prepared for the raid ahead. What type of backpack do I have? Do I need a bigger one? Don't make this a whole ordeal. Just glance at everything you have, take some mental notes and move on. Once you have that done and you know where you're at, that would be the next step, figuring out where you're at. Once you have that down, find out where your exfils are and just knowing map knowledge. You'll be in a great place if you can get these things done. Learn the map, follow the one you have pulled up on whatever map app I told you about or whatever, maybe you found a different one and then you'll be in a great spot. Now, your main concern as of items when you play as a scav doesn't really matter at this point in time. You're brand new to the game. Just loot a bunch of shit now so that I can give you something to focus on as a scav for your first time playing Tarkov. I'll tell you this. If you want to pick up any of these items, it'll greatly benefit you. A crinket lighter, a spark plug, intelligence folders, syringes, piles of meds, ololo vitamins, light bulbs, wires, M parts, bolts, screw nuts, salt, power cords, control relays, measuring tape, nails, small WD-40 cans, packs of nails, and packs of screws. All of those items will be crucial for your hideout early game, which we are not even going to touch in this video. The hideout is huge. Now, a lot of the items I mentioned can be found as loose loot or in the filing cabinets we talked about early, for example, in the Terra Bank building. Those are great filing cabinet areas. There's also some filing cabinets in the Terra Bank building as well, as well as the Capital Insights building as well. Now, if you can filter your map, filter for filing cabinets or duffel bags or simple loot stuff like that and valuables as well. And make sure you check that secret room we talked about too. Black computer towers are also great resources for searching for loot. The red and white computer towers, you won't be able to search. All right, next up is going to be movement and combat. Never, ever, ever, ever take a left handed peek unless you have key bound your left hand or change shoulder key bind. If you have a key bind for changing your shoulder, which shoulder your gun is mounted on, then you can do left handed peeks. But even at that, it's still a minor disadvantage. Always do a right handed peek because of the realism in this game. Imagine holding a rifle or any type of gun on your shoulder, in your right arm, you're right handed and leaning to the left. 
your whole body is going to lean out across that corner before you can get a shot on somebody. So in real life, you'd want to take right handed corners or switch hands if you can do that. Maybe you're ambidextrous. All right. OK, now that that is out of the way, shooting is hard as fuck in this game, it, like quite literally unreal. I mean, it's very realistic. But anyways, so just take your time, crouch, aim and fire repeatedly fire. Don't stop until they're dead. And again, if you're playing as a scav, you're going to want to play reactionary. Don't just go shooting other people. You'll lose scav rep anyways. Now, to stay surface level here in regards to combat, understand that armor is a real thing in this game, like we described earlier, and that you should always aim for the face. This thing right here, not the head, but the face. OK, now the legs are also not a bad spot to aim because those aren't armored either, but they're almost just as hard to hit. So it really doesn't matter. Either aim for the legs or the face. Those are the spots you want to aim for. Also, keep in mind, if you do not have room in your tactical rig for an additional magazine, you will drop the one you're using in your gun at that moment when you reload. So say your tactical rig right here is full of fucking magazines, almost like mine is, and you don't have any empty slot to pick up another magazine. When you go to reload your gun, you will drop that magazine on the ground and pull a new one into your gun. You can just look down and pick up that magazine and it'll go back in. Now, as for movement, I've just got some tips for you. I don't want to go too in depth in this. When you go to sprint around a map, don't sprint until you're zero stamina. Sprint until you have about a quarter to a third stamina left. Jump through bushes to go faster. Obviously, jumping makes more noise, which we'll talk about audio and just a second. Make sure you use the mantle feature instead of jumping, mantling and climbing things. When you go to loot something or somebody, press your prone key right after you press your loot key so that you can lay down. Make sure you have enough room. So if you're standing next to a technical crate, push the loot key, turn and prone so that you can lay down. It'll help keep you protected when you're looting. Now, when you're sprinting along large open areas or areas you can get sniped, make sure you're using your head turn feature when you're sprinting in one direction, which is just going to be holding the middle mouse button and moving your mouse left or right. Don't just run blatantly everywhere in the map, OK? Try and stop in cover that's safe safe and listen and look around to keep your awareness up. OK, you don't want to be running around blind. Now, the last thing for my fresh newbies, OK, you Huggies wearers who don't have Pampers yet is going to be audio. And it is such a complex thing, just like everything in Tarkov is that, again, I'm just going to have some tips for you because it could be so deep. So being over encumbered makes you louder. Use your mouse wheel to adjust your movement speed when walking. Scroll up or down and it can adjust how fast you walk or crouch walk. Now, when you're crouched at the lowest speed, it is always silent, except for when you're rotating. Now, in Tarkov, when you move to look left or right, your character actually steps. Now, if you're crouching at the lowest speed, it should be silent. However, if you're rotating, it won't be silent. Not always. It's not perfect. OK, so just kind of walk around a little bit slowly while you rotate if you want to rotate. Bushes will always make noise no matter what. Prone is very loud. Opening and closing your inventory, switching guns, dropping or using items, all of those things make noise. If you equip a med kit to use it, or if you use the med kit, if you equip a grenade, or if you use the grenade, those things all make noise. Reloading makes noise. Packing mags does not make noise. Dropping items makes noise. All of that stuff makes noise. Basically, if you can hear it, just assume that somebody else can hear it, unless obviously you're at zero speed and you're crouch walking. All right. For those of you who are Huggies wearers, thank you very much for sticking with me this far into the video. You ultra beginners. Now moving into the upgraded Pampers wearers, you guys who have maybe a match or two under your belt or you've seen other people play. It's time for tactical time dilation. So get ready to graduate from Huggies if you haven't yet into your Pampers, because I'm about to just shotgun blast your asshole full of fucking advice. OK. My absolute best advice up front, if you don't have a lot of time to play, is play as your scav as much as possible. Playing as your scav, getting your stash filled with loot and guns and ammo and other shit that you can use on your PMC. Keeping your stash organized, understanding what items you need for your hideout and focusing on completing tasks are going to help you enjoy the game much, much more as well. Now, I also highly recommend looking up task guides and hideout guides to help you progress. OK, I don't want to turn Tarkov into a guide reading simulator, which I'm going to touch on in just a moment. But anyways, the only issue with tasks is that you have to play them as your PMC. So just keep that in mind. Now, once you're at a point that you feel comfortable playing as your PMC, I highly recommend you do that because it'll be much more enjoyable and you'll be able to progress more. Playing with friends is a huge thing. If you have friends that play, play with your friends. Get rid of your gear fear. This is a huge thing you need to understand. Things will come and go in Tarkov. You don't need that shit. OK, you understand me? You will always have a scav every 20 minutes that you can use a scav loadout on your PMC. So don't worry about it. Money will come. Money will go. 
gear will come, gear will go. And if you have money, you can buy gear with money. So just don't worry about it. Always, 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 always when you play as your PMC, ensure your gear. It is infinitely cheaper than buying new gear every time. Ensure it with Prapper. It takes about 24 hours to get it back so you can play again tomorrow. Now, again, like I said, without turning Tarkov into a guide watching Excel spreadsheet reading wiki studying simulator, I would highly recommend that you go out and start using online resources that are available to you, like the mapgenie.io forward slash Tarkov, TarkovTracker.io, the Rat Scanner program. Program, the EFTAmmo.com website, and the general Tarkov wiki, as well as the Tarkov monitor app. Those will all be immensely helpful to you. So, so, so helpful. Now, some mighty recommendations for more in-game specifics is going to be use Ground Zero as practice. Ground Zero has almost every aspect of Tarkov in it, and that honestly can help you learn the game on a smaller, easier map so much like faster, just better, simpler. Okay. I recommend you go around Terror Group and the Capital Insight buildings and just start looting up the PCs constantly, as well as the filing cabinets. Those are a great way to make money early game, as well as checking the Amercom checkpoint for meds. Sometimes it spawns, sometimes it doesn't. All of that can help you keep yourself stocked up, as well as checking all the technical crates under the basement driveway road thing, parking garage, as well as there is a secret room that I'll clip again here to show you if you spawn by the Hobo Bridge that you can go check out that always spawns with a shit ton of loot as well. Now, if you want to play on other maps like customs, I suggest avoiding combat as much as you can. The crack house is great for meds if there's nobody there. Again, play as a scav to learn the maps first. Now, no matter what map you play on, always, always, always keep your eyes peeled. Constantly check your corners. Never be afraid to fall back to somewhere you just came from if you don't want to keep pushing a certain direction or if you hear gunfire and just take it slow. Tarkov is not a fast paced first person shooter. It's a realistic combat looter shooter. And honestly, this is some of the best advice that I also need to continue taking myself. If you're playing on customs, for example, as a scav or as a PMC, a stronghold, skeleton, construction, all of those places. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just look at the map and you'll be able to tell it's across the street from the bus station and new gas kind of in the warehouse area by crack house. All of those buildings you can get sniped from very easily. You constantly want to be looking everywhere, constantly thinking, where could my enemies be? You're never going to get every angle every time. It's going to happen. You're going to get head eyes. Don't droop your head down. All right. Keep your head up. Tarkov is an amazing game when you can get into it. OK, again, it's a realistic combat looter shooter. So treat it like real combat combat only move when you know it's safe or you're as confident as possible that it's going to be safe to traverse stop in good secure cover look around listen wear good headphones and just be aware all the time talking about using good headphones if you're on your pmc use your good gear don't be afraid to lose it like i said before don't have gear fear use your sword and headset your tactical sports the m32s from skier are fantastic headphones that you can always buy for like 25k the tax sports are honestly my go-to they're fucking phenomenal the aks 74u is a great gun you can buy from proper all the time the ammo he sells is low tier but it's always available Looking up level one trader weapon builds is also a great way to get comfortable with gunsmithing in the game or using different guns. Building up your hideout if you can early on so that you can get the shooting range to practice with different guns. Something to strive for to achieve as an early game player is the scav junk box too. If you go into the traders and you look at therapist, you can come down here and you can get the scav junk box. It's 1.1 million rubles, but this is beyond useful. I have two of them, bought them really early. They just store all of the junk that you get around the game and you can just sell all this shit if you don't want it or you can save it for your hideout. Super helpful. There is so much to this game that it will almost certainly take you more than a few hundred hours to become proficient at it. I'm not even there yet, and I just absolutely love this game. Another quick tip for you guys is using tactical rigs as storage. These hold more than the space that they take up as long as it's not like the security vest or some of the other smaller ones. These Umkas are amazing. These Tarzans also amazing. Great beginner sets. The Triton is great. Using these to store stuff in your stash will save you so much space. It's unbelievable. And you can even use them like I do. Like I've designated this one as my key storage. I just have a skull lock in there. This one I use as my weapon parts storage. The Tarzan I have empty. This I have as medical for the most part with a little bit of misc. This I have as mostly medical. This is all my food and drinks. This is my grenades and wearables. This is my more ammunition. This is more food and drink, mostly just drink. This gives you a little bit of energy. But yeah, anyways, you get the point.
all in all, if you've decided that you have the time to dedicate to Escape from Tarkov and you want to become an absolute fucking giga chad so that you can say, sounds like a skill issue, bro, to all your friends, then click the screen to watch my extended cut ultimate Giga Chat Escape from Tarkov guide series, okay? If it isn't displayed on screen yet, then that probably means that I haven't quite posted it yet or I'm still working on it. So leave a comment letting me know that you're waiting for it so that I can get her done, all right? Other than that, that's all I got for you. Stay tuned for more Extraction Game news. Peace!